नमस्कार वेलकम टू टूडेज वेबिनार ऑन यूटिलाइजिंग दूटिलाइज द अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ सोशल मीडिया एंड मोबाइल टेक्नोलॉजी जॉइंटली ऑर्गेनाइज बाई नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एंड नेशनल डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट ऑथोरिटी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर्स गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया India being one of the highly disaster vulnerable countries has always been on its toe to confront the challenges posed by a number of disaster a number of national interventions were carried out for disaster management honorable prime minister sri narendra modi during his address at asian ministerial conference on disaster risk in 2016 outlined the 10 point agenda on disaster risk management in which he provided direction to address all the unprecedented challenges of disaster the point 7 of that agenda strongly encourages utilizing the opportunity provided by social media and mobile technology in the field of disaster management today's webinar is directed towards sensitizing institutionalizing and prom and promoting exchange of information knowledge and innovation on understanding the opportunities provided by social media and mobile technology and recognizing the potential of social media for all aspect of disaster risk management to enlighten us in the theme of the webinar in the inaugural session we are graced by the presence of sri gbv sharma member secretary ndma lieutenant general said ata hasnain member ndma Dr. V. Tirupoga, IAS, Additional Secretary, NDMA; Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, Executive Director, NIDM. We are also fortunate to have distinguished speaker, Professor V. K. Sharma, Vice Chairman, Sikkim SDMA; Brigadier Ajay Gangwar, Advisor, Operation and Communication, NDMA; Sri S. B. Mukesh, ADG, NABM; Sri S. S. Jain. director dm department of telecommunication ministry of communications ajit ajit uh, batham project officer ddma and professor surya prakash head gmr division nit now i would request professor surya prakash head gmr division nit for his welcome address over to you sir uh, thank you mr raju thapa Uh, i welcome all the distinguished uh, uh, dignitaries in the inaugural program and also the distinguished speakers of the technical session uh, on my personal behalf and on behalf of nidm let me tell that uh, the 10 point agenda which was given during uh, the first asia uh, uh, ministerial conference after the sandai framework in 2015 Uh, this was held during 3rd to 5th of november at uh, bigyan bhavan in new delhi and honorable prime minister none other than him uh, had actually inaugurated the program and given us the 10 point agenda on disaster risk reduction out of these 10 point agenda today we are going to cover agenda point 7 which is focusing on role of social media and mobile technologies in all perspectives of disaster management so this here we will be focusing on how the societal interventions and resilience can be brought by using the media that is most familiar with them that is uh, where they can intervene easily and can learn about disaster management and become resilient against the risks posed by them so we will be covering all the aspect technology aspect media aspect societal aspects and for that we have the resource persons from the respective departments institutions and the ministry with these words i welcome the dignitaries uh, as the program coordinator and uh, wish all the best to all the speakers uh, for the today's program thank you raju thank you sir now moving in, i will request major general manoj kumar bindal Assistant Seva Medal, Executive Director, National Institute of Disaster Management, for his inaugural address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Raju Thapa. Uh, first of all, heartiest welcome to all the participants who have joined. Uh, uh, the number is about three hundred and fifty right now. 
and all the distinguished uh, panel and speakers who are there in the inaugural session and also who will be speaking during the webinar. And sincere thanks to Mr. Shri GVV Sharma ji, uh, Member Secretary NDMA, who uh, actually he uh, started this whole process uh, of conducting webinars solely on the discussing the 10 uh, items of the 10 point agenda uh, in the month of August, September and October and dedicated sessions for that. Based on that, this particular series has been started between uh, in collaboration of NIDM and NDMA. Uh, so I'm thankful to uh, sir to uh, think and conceive such a, a series and uh, uh, have uh, and has tasked uh, uh, NIDM to do the same. We are also thankful that General uh, Sayyid Atta Hasnan with his large experience of dealing with media uh, in, in everyday life uh, lately uh, will be giving us a, uh, certain good examples and uh, will prove to us that what uh, we think about how it can be put into practice. Dr. V. Thirupoga was looking after the social uh, media platform of NDMA uh, has also been requested to speak as to how he has planned to take it forward. We have uh, Brigadier Vijay Ajay Gangwar also from NDMA who will be speaking because he is uh, dealing with ops and communication. And we have two states uh, who are representing us today. One is Sikkim, Professor V.K. Sharma, and uh, uh, Delhi uh, UT, that is uh, Mr. Ajit Batham. Uh, and we have uh, from the Ministry of Communications, uh, Sri Jain, and from the NABM, their Broadcasting Management Academy, uh, Sri S.B. Mukesh, who has just taken over. And we are going to discuss a very important topic today, that is uh, utilize the opportunities provided by social media and mobile and recognize the potential of social media and develop applications for all aspects of disaster risk management. This is the item number seven of PM 10 point agenda, which was initiated in 2016. Uh, talking about this uh, particular topic, uh, we are all aware that social media are the platforms that enable the interactive web by engaging users to participate in, comment on, and create content as means of communicating with other users and the public. So the media forges a direct link between the public and emergency organizations and plays a very important role in disseminating vital information to the public before, during, and after disasters. It assists in management of disasters by educating the public about the disasters, warning of hazards, gathering and transmitting information about affected areas, alerting government officials, relief organizations, and the public to specific needs, and also facilitating discussions about disaster and response for continuous improvement. To help the social media fulfill these roles, direct and effective working relationship between the media and disaster management organizations should be established and maintained. Experience has shown that regular interaction with the media before a disaster strikes aids the effective flow of information and lays the groundwork for effective working relationship in the aftermath of a disaster. In uh, managing disaster, the necessity of right information at the right time stands good and it has not changed for centuries. People need warnings ahead of the disaster and then in its aftermath, data on casualties, damage, supplies and skills that are needed, best way to bring in these resources that help, uh, that uh, the fact that the assurance that the help is available and is being provided and such like activities. There are many examples where public education and the rapid widespread dissemination of early warnings saved thousands of lives. In November 70, uh, for example, uh, a tropical cyclone which combined with a high tide struck southeastern Bangladesh leaving more than 300,000 people dead and 1.3 million homeless. In May 85, that is after 15 years later, a comparable cyclone and storm hit the same area. This time, there was better local dissemination of disaster warnings and people were better prepared and they responded to them. The loss of lives, although still high, was about 10,000, but 3% that of 1970. And similarly, the same uh, similar cyclone struck the same area in 94. Less than 1,000 people died. And so 
similar examples we can see in Orissa where uh, Cyclone Fani, Phylen, Hodod, they all have been hitting repeatedly and the, the, the loss to life and damage to property has been progressively reducing because of a better dissemination system, alerting and dissemination system put in place. On the other hand, there are many ex examples where absence of alert and warning has resulted into a huge number of casualties and extensive damage to property, like Bhopal Gas Leak, 1999 super cyclone in Orissa, 2004 Indian tsunami. They are the recent example where timely alert could have saved millions of people and enormous property. It, so these examples make it clear that social media with its uh, instantaneous outreach throughout the world plays a very vital role in educating the public about disasters, warning of hazards, gathering and transmitting information about affected areas, alerting government officials, relief organizations, and the public to the specific needs and facilitating discussions about the disaster preparedness and response. And also, it can also assist in pre-disaster education. This may be crucial to an effective uh, warning process. Uh, they provide information and advice to victims and others in the wake of disasters. And they also help activating the local disaster response by assisting in simulating, stimulating effective disaster uh, uh, leak. Because we have uh, such esteemed uh, uh, panelists who will be speaking uh, I will uh, finish by saying that uh, with this increased knowledge uh, of social media and technological advancement, it will, be, it will help us to provide reasonable early warning about various hazards uh, uh, and uh, help us to save lives. The question is, how do we connect this development of science, of social media and mobile technologies and convert that into an uh, actionable plan wherein it reaches the right people at the right time? With this, I finish my uh, opening remarks and I once again uh, uh, thank all the panelists for coming on this uh, webinar and I uh, welcome all the participants once again. Thank you so much. Over to you, Raju. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your address and underlining the importance of mobile technology to provide information and better decision for effective disaster management system. Now I would request Lieutenant General Saeed Atta Hasnain, member National National uh, NDMA, recipient of Param Vishesh Seva Medal, Uttam Youth Seva Medal, Ati Vishesh Seva Medal, Sena Medal, Vishesh Seva Medal, for his special address. Over to you, sir. We will get back to it, sir. Now moving ahead. Now I will request Sri G V V Sharma, member secretary. NDMA, Ministry of Home Affairs, for his keynote address to encourage and enlighten our participant with his vast knowledge and experience. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Major General Bingal and uh, friends, uh, Professor Surya Prakash and Professor Sharma and all the esteemed delegates, I hope Lieutenant General Sayyad Atta Hasnain will join soon. I am very happy that NIDM has come forward for holding these series of events on very, very important topics of 10 point agenda, which has been enunciated by the Honorable Prime Minister of India. These are very important, essential ideas which are crystallized from the Disaster Management Act and all the requirements uh, of various stakeholder organizations in the country. So today, the theme is about the use of social media and the mobile technologies in the context of disaster management. I would like to highlight that the first point, which is generally not understood, is that communication through social media is a two-way process. It is not a single line command. It is not that we want to share some information, therefore we we have something to share, so we share with the public. It, it just does not end like that. It is necessary to have a participatory element. It is necessary to have a dialogue with our stakeholders, and especially in the context of disaster management. The organizations which are involved in disaster response activities, like the National Disaster Response Force, 
the state disaster response force and the coordinating agencies like the ministry of home affairs in their social media interaction it is necessary also to get the feedback from the affected people that what is the communication from their side people who are affected or people who have apprehensions regarding disasters in what manner they would like to communicate with the system and for communicating the system either for raising their queries or for you know giving any specific alert or giving any specific information regarding a disaster in all those matters we should be able to get the feedback in a willing and in a participatory and in a timely manner so for which it is very very important that people at our end have to be clear that this is a two way communication process it is not just a single side that uh, we just have something to share so we share irrespective of whether somebody follows it up or not or whether somebody has alternative means of communicating with us and our, the second point i would like to mention as very important in our social media interactions with uh, the public at large is that whatever we communicate should be based on truth it should be based on ground realities and uh, it is not our focus to uh, to misrepresent the facts we have to be realistic and we have to be based on the ground realities so therefore it is extremely important so that the overall credibility of the social media platform of our organizations is the credibility can be enhanced only if not only we state the truth but we should be seen to be stating the truth so therefore it is important that even if certain information is critical it may not be palatable it may not be uh, positive even then it is necessary that uh, such information is also allowed to pass on through the social media and then effectively whatever is the counter picture that should be given by the concerned authorities so the important point i would like to mention is that our social media interactions have to be based on the truth and it should be based on ground realities then the third point i would like to mention is that while the mobile technologies are important while the social media is important this is not a panacea for actual work at the ground level it is extremely important to keep it in mind that disaster management is a holistic process it is not disaster response alone there are a number of things which need to be done well before the disaster phase there are to be capacity building there has to be prevention there has to be mitigation there have to be a number of holistic measures for reducing the disaster risk and then of course during response time we have of course relief rescue we have the basic rehabilitation then you have rehabilitation of the livelihoods reconstruction of livelihoods all these will come as a part of a whole cycle of events in which disaster response is one important activity therefore in all our interactions pertaining to social media we have to keep in mind that all the aspects of disaster management and all the all the components of the disaster management cycle in a holistic manner is addressed because normally the typical human tendency is to highlight on response which is good response is important activity but at the same time what is uh, behind response aapka ko samna karne ke liye piche kya kya karna padta hai aur iske liye kya kya taiyari karna chahiye ye sab mamla bhi social media ke interaction mein hum log samajhna chahiye aur isko bhi communicate karte hain with these words once again i thank nidm for uh, having come for god for this event and i look forward to active participation by all the distinguished participants thank you very much thank you very much sir for your for your thought provoking uh, address and underlining the importance of mobile technology as a two way approach to uh, to necessarily enhance adaptation capacity and support feedback ensure information access and uh, enable the active participation to reduce the vulnerability uh like you have said mobile technology are appropriate for providing these needs to improve our resilience uh now i will request uh, like to call upon dr hajit kor a young professional 
an idea. Well, Raju, I think General Hasnan has joined. Just uh, request him. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, now I okay, sir. I cannot see. Yes. Okay, yes, sir. I can see you. Yes. Sir. Now I will request uh, Lieutenant General Atsaid Atta Hasan, sir, to kindly uh, ad give us a special address in the inaugural session. Sir, over to you, sir. Am I being seen there now? Yes. Yes, sir. You are audible and visible. And can I can I be heard also? Thank. You. Yes, sir. Sorry, my apologies. My deep apologies. Technology. We are discussing social media, and that's exactly what the issue here. Also, we are having a problem of technology here. Anyway, my pleasure completely to be joining into this uh, excellent uh, uh, webinar on a subject which is which is very very uh, close to my heart. And uh, besides the usual experiences that people have had, uh, I would like to add for interest that how closely natural disasters and hazards, the situations that they produce, how close they are to the situations which are sometimes produced by security hazards. Take your mind to 9-11. Take your mind to 26-7 in Mumbai. Right, both were massive disasters. Um, Twenty-six eleven extending for about two to three days. Try and relate to it because many of you will be able to remember the images which were coming to your mind at that particular time. Now, uh, also try and relate to the Kashmir floods when uh, when the Jhelum um, overflowed the banks, the embankment, and kept and went into into the into the complete landscape of uh, Srinagar, what was the situation at that time? I would say that if you are a person in authority, particularly if you are a person in authority, you are going to feel so isolated because you won't know, you just won't know what to do. You are helpless. And uh, you find that uh, your communications, in the sense your physical communications are being able to move here and there are all cut off. In Kashmir, even the even the mobile communication was completely swamped completely. In other areas, like in, in the case of uh, 2611 in Mumbai or earthquake situations, etc., you still had uh, your mobile towers functioning in certain areas, etc. But you'll find that the public also, the first thing which happens in the in the mind of an individual in a disaster situation is a sense of isolation. My family is alone. I am alone. And there is a sense of panic. I think the great thing you can do with, with social media today is the aspect of human connect. There is a, the whole psyche of the human connect that immediately you can connect with someone, seek assistance. If nothing else, at least share your dilemma. And that will lighten your load immediately. You will get a tremendous amount of advice from people, from specialists, etc. If the systems are all put in place. So let me start with this, with this particular aspect, the psychological aspect of what a human faces, even in leadership circles or under normal circumstances, a normal man in the street. What does he what does he suffer? Uh, I, I, I do think that uh, one of the greatest things which happens today is uh, the ability, if you've got everything put together, if the, if the establishment, if the, if the government and the organizations have got everything put together into some kind of a system, then there is a tremendous scope immediately for outreach to the people. Now, this is uh, particularly so in the response time. Now, as you are aware, mostly these situations are all divided out into pre-disaster pre situations, the disaster situation itself, and the post-disaster situation. In the pre-disaster situation, if you are, if you have, if you have uh, recognized this issue, put together your systems, obviously you are directly addressing the whole issue of uh, disaster risk management to reduce the effect of, of disaster. Because uh, there will be far too many people panicking. There will be far too many people without support and assistance. Here it is to stabilize their minds, stabilize their environment, 
and allow them to seek assistance uh, in a much, much quicker time frame if they are networked already and more important if they are aware. So that brings me to this whole subject of awareness. Today, uh, we think that a lot of people are linked on social media, for example, on WhatsApp or maybe even on Facebook and uh, Twitter. Let me assure you my experience. I do feel that a very large majority of those people have no idea what to do with these platforms. They're using it for all kinds of negativities. They're using it for all kinds of uh, other purposes. But uh, my experience tells me that if you try and educate them on how social media can be used to come to their assistance under emergent conditions of um, um, security uh, attacks or, or disaster hazards or things like that, there is immense resistance to learning. And this, this experience comes from recent days when I find myself on social media, when I'm putting out things which the NDMA is doing, which the NIDM is doing, I find the levels of interest so, so absolutely low. But the moment I put out something on the Sushant Singh Rajput case, I find hundreds of retweets. So this is human psyche. Human psyche, the realization is just not there. So us, we all as disaster managers, it is up, up to us how we bring a sense of interest, a sensitization to the dangers which lie before them, to the people, and sensitize them to the power of social media, of what is available with them in these platforms, and how can they be used more effectively. This, I think, is one of the very, very important aspects of social media connected to a disaster risk reduction and disaster management. The whole concept of IEC, information, education, and communication, in that the education part comes in very, very strongly into ensuring the, that the outreach on it, on these aspects is brought to home to the, to the people completely, triggering their interest, catching their attention. How, how do you do it? Otherwise, otherwise by, by nature, human beings are trivial in their, in their approach to such technologies. They don't, they, they take them as essentially as entertainment and nothing, nothing more than that. Okay. Uh, I, I do believe that uh, besides anything else, of course, the fact that if if the systems remain in place uh, in a risk in, in a disaster situation, or even if they are restored in a, in the quickest time frame, the 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 aspect of relief work is obvious to all of us. We know that uh, we have relief teams. We have got the NDRF. We've got local communities. Now, empowering local communities is one huge thing which social media can do. Because the local communities are the people who know best. They know the situation on the ground. Maybe the technological aspects of disaster relief may, may not dawn on them completely. This is the time when if some, then some identified people in the local communities are there in pre-existing form of, 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 of organization, outreach to them, telling them, educating them, informing them, and, and directing them can, can assist great way as far as uh, relief uh, work, work goes. I would go to the extent, I'm quite fascinated by this Abda Mitra scheme, which is going on. And I, and I, and I do think that uh, uh, in, in the Abda Mitra program, in the whole aspect of the of the um, uh, volunteers who work for disaster um, relief, this is aspect of social media training is a must. Because I think ultimately, these are the people who will ultimately become your social media relief or social media disaster warriors. In many ways, these people are the ones who know the, who know the, uh, the, the, the local conditions best if they are already trained in the essentials of relief work, and they are adept at the use of social media, that they are the ones who take on this responsibility. 
and some of them are the ones who sit perhaps in the nodal centers in the in the in the state uh, emergency operation centers etc and manage this entire thing because it is uh, i would say just an ordinary individual out somewhere from the bureaucracy being placed here and asked to do this work is not going to meet your your requirements your requirements are specialized and therefore it is about time like we in the armed forces are attempting to now create social media warriors or information warriors i think the disaster management world also now needs to create disaster relief social media warriors this this could be a very very important thing for the, for the future i also feel that uh, time will come maybe still a little too early where every individual in a, a disaster prone area has to have on his mobile uh, uh, on his instrument some kind of an app which needs to be developed over a period of time and this can always be done in conjunction with many of our outstanding uh, um, technical education institutions like the iits etc with a specific apda uh, app which is created downloaded on his mobile which is activated required during an exercise or during an actual disaster which will give the kind of information which we need as disaster risk managers <coughs> we need to sit on this work on this identify it see the parameters which are required for it and perhaps instead of pushing buttons at the last minute when a disaster takes place you have got a ready made app in your hand which all you do you have to press you have information available on that and it connects you with the different con people concerned in the district or the state etc so uh, this is another area which i would strongly recommend that we we start examining it the third other very important thing to me is um, the psychological aspect the psycho social aspect because behavior patterns here change during uh, during uh, hazards and uh, you don't know how people are going to react what kinds of panics panic is going to be there there is going to be a tremendous amount of misinformation which needs to be corrected through the correct information and therefore guidance in a psychosocial form needs to be sent out in the form of bulletins or whatever it is understandable decipherable language which people can then uh, understand i'm coming to the end of my uh, this thing i i do think that uh, there are six or seven issues which we just need to take stock of and i'll just flag them one is uh, i think the aspect of listening to public debate there must be more public debate and through social media the we should be able to reach out to the communities who are vulnerable to to uh, to disaster monitoring of situations as they exist once a disaster has struck subsequently the third issue which i would like to highlight is extending an emergency response response and the management of it then is creating the right social cohesion in an area where you uh, a, a disaster has struck then furthering the causes of the people who have been struck by the uh, uh, disaster including the charitable causes uh including uh, connecting with ngos etc all this can be done through the social media route uh enhancing research this itself through connectivity through social media in a pre hazard kind of situation and i think very importantly the whole aspect of curbing rumors social media itself gives right to rise to rumors but um, social media is also the instrument which can be used to curb rumors and so these are some of the issues we need to look at uh, uh, more comprehensively out of them the issue which i would put my finger to today is the aspect of trying to develop a a apda app for the future a national apda app for the future maybe a state um, focused apda app for the future <coughs> and the and the second issue of which i would focus on is the need to train more social media disaster relief warriors thank you very much for your time i'll stop there <coughs>
thank you sir for sharing your experience and highlighting the role and scope social media has in disseminating the information about disaster by allowing people to share information and ask for help and social media are becoming vital to recovery efforts after crisis uh, and sir you have rightly highlighted in order to build disaster resilient communities there is a need to empower community to get engaged with all the phases of disaster management whether it be prevention mitigation preparedness response or recovery thank you very much sir now i will request uh, dr hajit kor young professional mpdm for her vote of thanks over to you ma'am Raju, uh, it's my privilege to take this opportunity to place on record our vote of thanks for today's webinar. Uh, first of all, I would like to propose a hearty vote of thanks to our Chief Kashri G V V Sharma, Member Secretary N D M A, for gracing today's webinar and delivering the keynote address. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to Lieutenant General Syed Atta Hasnain, Member N D M A, and Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, Executive Director N I D M, for sparing their precious time from their busy schedule for providing encouragement and support to all of us. We are grateful to Shri J V V Sharma Ji, Member Secretary N D M A, for his enormous cooperation and support in organizing of this webinar series on Prime Minister Ten Point Agenda. Also, I wish to express my gratitude to Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, E D N I D M. For providing innovative and encouraging environment, moral guidance, continuous enthusiasm, and valuable suggestions throughout NIDM endeavors, I must mention a deep sense of appreciation uh, for our distinguished speaker, Professor V K Sharma, Vice Chairman, Sikkim State Disaster Management Authority, Brigadier Ajay Gangwar, Advisor NDMA, Sri S B Mukesh, A D G N A B M, Sri S S Jain. Uh, Director, Department of Telecommunication, Ministry of Communication, uh, Shri Ajit Batham, Project Officer, Delhi Disaster Management Authority, and Professor Sundar Prakash, Head GMRD, NIDM, for their presence to enlighten the participants with their vast knowledge and experiences. I hope this webinar will be a fruitful one, and all the participants will have some takeaways point from this program. Thank you, Dhanyavad. Over to you, Raju. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ajit Kaur. That we have come to the end of the inaugural session. Now moving on to our to the technical session, uh, we have some senior level resource person, experts, professional, and functionaries who will have, who will with their vast, long, meaningful experience will enlighten us in the, this session. Uh, and then at the onset of the technical session, uh, I welcome all the distinguished speaker participant who has joined us through uh, Cisco WebEx platform and several others who are watching us through YouTube Live. Uh, your active participation is important throughout the session. You can enter your questions in the question answer chat box, and we will have the question answer session and the end of the webinar when after all the presentation from the distinguished speakers are over. Now, for our first presentation, we have Sri S S Jain, Director, Disaster Management, Department of Telecommunication, Ministry of Communication. Sri S S Jain has played a pivotal role in implementation of uh, National Cyclone Risk Mitigation Project during his tenure with N D M A. Over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, Mr. Thapa. Good morning, and feel honored to be here with all of you. Am I audible properly? Yes, sir. You are audible, okay. and your presentation is visible. Okay. So during this discussion, focus on mobile technologies and the various initiatives taken by Department of Telecommunications, Ministry of Communication to contain spread of COVID-19 using various mobile technologies. uh now these are the major in initiatives taken by department of telecom telecommunication first one is covid 19 quarantine alert system abbreviated as cqas second is covid 19 savdhan platform and third one is shram setu bulk migrants trans tracking and reporting system let me switch over to cqas now first thing which mind is what is the need of cqas we all know 
that whenever any person is uh, declared corona positive then in that case that person has to be quarantined for a definite period of time now this time period varies from state to state and it is approximately uh, 10 to 21 days lot of instances of breach of this quarantine has been noticed now quarantine may be in the form of home quarantine or institutional quarantine now naturally state governments were highly concerned about the breach of quarantine and 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 the possible community spread due to breach of quarantine so a solution is offered by department of telecommunication in the form of cqas now how it works is when the information regarding mobile numbers home address and quarantine period is received from the state governments by dot field units then this information is being fed to cqas server now cqas server is centrally available at a particular location in delhi this server is having integration with all major telecom service providers uh, airtel voda idea reliance jio and bsnl now what it does is it creates a jio fence around the home location of the quarantined person and when this jio fence is breached by the quarantined person then the information is being passed on to the concerned state government authorities through alert message as well as email this system is also having integration with ndma gis server in case of any in case when any breach is noticed then the information regarding home location and current location of that particular person is also being passed on to the ndma gis server so that they are able to plot it on their server this system is also having integration with some of the dashboards developed by state governments now let me talk a little bit about geofence geofence means approximately uh, a parameter of 300 meters around the uh, home location of the quarantined person is framed virtually and whenever any breach happens then the state government is being informed now you can always say that why 300 meters now it is due to limitations available with the telecom technology so if the person moves beyond 300 meters only then only it is going to get noticed then and the alarm is being given to state government now what the state government can do state government can issue warning to such type of persons can send them to institutional quarantine as well as can lodge fir against such type of people of frequent violations now these are the salient features of this system this system is available 24/7 scalable developed indigenously now naturally you can i i think most of the people are going to have this question in in mind that what if the if the mobile is switched off or if the mobile is left intentionally by the quarantine person at a particular place then in both the cases the system is designed in a way that through free trackings uh, of the location of the person the state authorities are going to be given alert in both the cases the system is robust scalable and it works for both smartphone and feature phones this doesn't require any con any configuration by the quarantine person it is having integration with ndma gis portal and it has got proper legal sanctity under section 5 uh, sub section 2 of indian telegraph act uh, now let me talk about the utilization part this system has been used widely by the state governments and more than 24 lakh numbers uh, monitored by this system and more than 17 crore alert, alert messages have been sent to state government authorities at present more than 1 lakh active users active targets are are being monitored through this system 
now let me uh, switch over to the second initiative by department of telecom which is covid 19 savdan platform now again the question is what is the need uh, let me explain to you in simple words that uh, during covid 19 lot of state governments expressed need to send location specific alerts to the people residing in that particular area like if any zone in a particular city is declared as a containment zone, then naturally the state government would like to inform all the residents who are putting up in that containment zone that this is declared as a containment zone. You please don't venture out of your homes. Other than this, su such similar type of information like, like availability, availability of testing facility in a particular area, quarantine facility in a particular area as well as sub essential supply distribution points in a particular area such type of information was required to be given in geo intelligent manner so for this this covid 19 southern platform was developed by dot in fact this was this is developed by our technical arm center for development of telematics for for telematics now how are we able to provide the information naturally the content of the message is going to be controlled by the sdma or ndma or mha they are the message controlling agency what is being done at sdma or ndma level is they simply use a graphic user interface and simply draw a polygon on the screen uh, the screen uh, to finalize the area in which the message is going to be sent through the mobile phone once they draw the po polygon then all the mobile mobile towers which are available in that particular area are automatically automatically selected and the subscribers or customers who are latched with these mobile towers they get this message automatically so this is completely automated approach almost near real time but i won't say it is real time because sometimes depending upon the number of customers selected there is a delay of half an half an hour or one hour and it caters to tourists as well as roamers also it means if if somebody is roaming around in that area and and he does not belong to that state even that he even then he is going to get the message no app is to be downloaded in this case no subscription is required and since this is completely automated you can send you can always schedule the alert dissemination message can be sent even at two o'clock in the night uh, further this system is being used last since last four months uh, and this system has been utilized to send uh, to send uh, location specific alert messages in case of cyclone m1 and cyclone nisarga also so basically what we are doing utilizing this system is that we have brought alert generating agencies and alert disseminating agencies on one platform if you look at this slide on the left side are alert generating agencies at present the integration is is there with imd and cwc and on the right side are uh, alert dissemination agencies at present the integration is there only with telecom service providers but very soon we are going to upscale this project and we are going to have all alert gener generating agencies and all alert disseminating agencies on board what i mean by alert disseminating agencies is like all india radio television channels private fn channels electronic sirens etc so uh, so uh, this way the project is going to be upscaled and naturally the content of the message is going to be controlled by ndma or sdma uh, I'm sorry, a little bit of uh, now how this system is being utilized. So this system has been utilized extensively by uh, 26 states and more than 150 crore SMS have been sent uh, in geo intelligent manner and that too free of cost. And uh, the SMS have been sent in English and 16 other regional languages. the system is based upon common alert protocol which is itu standard 
this system was under development since last two and a half years and uh, and during kerala floods also this system was used uh, on trial basis system as I, I as i have told the system was used during cyclone m1 and cyclone nisarga also as a special case based upon the request received from government of west bengal and government of odisha now let me switch over to uh, shram setu uh, which is bulk migrant tracking and reporting system you know I, as we all know that uh, post log post lockdown uh, a huge migration of laborers and people happened uh, happened to their home states now naturally this was a cause of concern for the state governments because these people who were migrating from other states could have been a source of potential virus spread so the state governments they wanted to know the approximate numbers numbers of migrants who are who have shifted to their state as well as their uh, their locations now now what was the the intention of the state government was to ramp up ramp up the testing facilities quarantine facilities isolation facilities and to create awareness in the areas where mass influx happened solution was given by department of telecommunication and what we did is that we uh, started analyzing telecom data state by state and pre migration and post migration basis when you analyze telecom data then you immediately come to know that how many people have moved out of the state and how many people have moved into the state how it happens is suppose post migration if we are finding that few lakh numbers are missing from the telecom data then it is it then it can be safely presumed that these people have moved out of the state and if some numbers have been added post migration then it can be safely presumed that these number that these these people have moved to this particular state uh, but the concept is very simple but the implementation proved very difficult for us because we have to analyze pan india telecom data of all the states and for this purpose we had to utilize big data analytics when this information was provided to state governments regarding the numbers as well as locations then the state government could use could utilize this information in a meaningful manner and could put these people under institutional or home quarantine could create awareness in the masses uh, in the close prox proximity to them as well as ramp up or improve their testing facilities in those particular areas now let me just give you a chart how the system has provided details for bihar for the state of bihar when this analysis was done between 30th april to 31st of may then we came to know that millions of people have moved to move to bihar like uh, from uttar pradesh approximately 4,52,774 people moved to bihar so uh, uh, this way we were able to help state governments sdmas as well as ndma for providing a proper response to during uh, to uh, meet up the challenge posed by corona 19 by covid 19 so with this uh, with this all the major in initiatives initiatives taken by dot ministry of communication is over and with this i conclude my presentation thank you thank you all thank you sir for your presentation and highlighting the covid-19 quarantine alert system uh, which prepares a list of mobile numbers segregate them on the basis of telecom service provider and the location data provided by the telecom companies to create geofencing and you have also highlighted the scope and mechanism of function of covid-19 uh, sardhan platform and shram setu app thank you very much sir now for presentation i would request brigadier ajay gangwar ji advisor op and communication national disaster management authority ministry of home affairs over to you sir uh thank you mr thapa am i audible yes sir you are audible sir
Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am uh, advisor operations and communications at NDMA, and uh, I would like to thank both the uh, MIDM and NDMA to afford me this opportunity to share my thoughts on the utility of uh, social media and mobile technologies in disaster management. Uh, while the time allotted to the speakers uh, is not really sufficient to uh, tackle such a vast uh, uh, topic, but let me try and uh, attempt to do uh, justice. I don't have a presentation, so I would be speaking from my notes. Uh, the social media definition has already been uh, covered and is well known to us. Uh, suffice to say that the accessibility and the uh, scalable communication techniques uh, that the social media provides has substantially changed the way organization and communities interact and the individuals also. Uh, there has been a study by the American Red Cross which shows that uh, more and more people are uh, turning towards sites like Facebook, Twitter, uh, etc., to learn about emergencies and you know disasters which are unfolding, uh, both to get uh, information about such events and to check on their family and friends. The Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter are the most popular uh, social networking sites that people turn to during natural disasters. Uh, General Hasnain has already highlighted the importance of the human connect that the social media provides during such disasters. It's a very important aspect and utility of uh, social media. We have seen good examples of effective use of social media during the Uttarakhand disaster, the Chennai floods, Kerala floods, Pony cyclone, and many other disasters in India. The Social media has been very effectively uh, used in um, uh, these disasters. Now, research has identified four primary ways in which the uh, individuals use social media technology during the disaster management. First and foremost is, of course, to know the well-being of the near and dear ones. So the family and the friends communication is facilitated by the social media platform in disasters. And of course, the most popular are the Twitter and Facebook and uh, to a le lesser extent, the blogs uh, that are there. Uh, situation updates, uh, the neighbors and the communities share critical information between each other, such as uh, uh, road closures or uh, uh, closing of certain utilities, power outages, and other uh, related uh, information about damages, etc., are uh, exchanged. Uh, and this was in a number of cases, uh, the citizens rely uh, more on uh, these uh, uh, social media platforms for it than the traditional channels like the television, radio, etc., uh, which could be disturbing uh, trend at times, but no, that's the fact of life, that's the way of life today. Uh, the social media platforms are also used by the citizens and individuals to exchange information about accessibility to various services like um, uh, first aid points or uh, uh, where the aid is getting distributed, relief material is getting distributed. Such like information is also exchanged over the social media. Certain um, characteristics of social media, very quickly, I would like to cover, which has helped in this uh, uh, role of social media in uh, disaster risk reduction. It is decentralized. Uh, no one entity is controlling uh, uh, the social media. And it facilitates a democratic way of functioning, peer-to-peer -peer interaction. And it is inclusive. People from all walks of life um, can connect to each other and have access to the facilities that are provided on the social media. The connectivity is uh, ubiquitous. It facilitates collaboration. And uh, it uh, encompasses uh, uh, various uh, formats like uh, text, uh, video, photographs, you know, PowerPoints or PDF documents. 
and social media platforms today offer uh, exchange of more than one form of uh, content moreover the social media now you know the, uh, uh, the these interactions are interconnected these platforms are interconnected and you can interconnect uh, you know between various uh, social media platforms uh, this particular form of communication is also device agnostics it can work on mobile simple mobiles you can work from computers tablets etc and uh, it provides for communication you know uh, both before the disasters and uh, during and after the disaster the latter of course depends upon how much infrastructure is damaged but uh, as an as the internet connectivity and other uh, uh, connectivity gets restored the uh, social media becomes more and more um, uh, widely available even post disasters and uh, uh, i will now like to cover you know the use of the mobile technologies and use of social media uh, in various phases of disaster management i'll cover that quickly in 2 uh, 3 minutes and then i would like to share some examples of uh, effective use of uh, social media as well as mobile technologies separately at the end of my uh, talk so coming to the mitigation phase uh, social media and mobile technologies can be very effectively used for risk appraisal and vulnerability assessment of communities and localities uh, it could um, it, it it can it can be a great enabler to uh, facilitate uh, community involvement in mitigation projects its implementation and monitoring for dissemination of guidelines and codes example the building codes that uh, we have uh, the mason training manuals are there the user handbooks for house building in various uh, scenarios um, these platforms uh, use uh, help in dissemination of such information to the community at large and uh, it can help you know uh, monitor and maintenance of assets that have been created for mitigation if you have created a bund or you have created a embankment uh the communities through social media platforms can give feedback to the government agencies and help monitor and maintain these assets during the preparedness uh, phase of disaster management uh, it can be very effectively both these technologies the social media and mobile technologies can be used for uh, alert uh, and uh, early warning dissemination um uh, it can be used for community awareness for dissemination of advice and preventive activities to the communities it can also be used for monitoring whether these advisories and these um, efforts are getting implemented um, properly uh, use of ai coupled with these technologies uh, of social media platform uh, we could generate models and i'll give you some examples and assist in forecasting google is doing uh, certain initiatives in this regard i'll share with you uh, later uh these two platforms are also uh quite effective uh, during the response uh, and the relief uh, uh, phase in which um, uh, very quickly the situational awareness can be built about what is the extent of damage and the kind of people uh, people who are affected localities that are affected and then a targeted response can be facilitated uh cloud sourcing of information has been talked off and it's been uh, very well uh, covered and we need to guard against the dangers of crowd sourcing the reliability of information but nevertheless that's not withstanding it's a very important source of information uh, during uh, disasters during the response phase uh, these two technologies the social media technologies and the mobile technologies can greatly facilitate collaborative uh, problem solving and decision making the the decision makers and the community affected communities can collaborate with each other and uh, get targeted and effective um, uh, response it can help in quick response uh, deployment of responders as well as the relief uh, material the architecture is pretty open so uh, the Uh, community which has got access to diverse kind of equipment and technologies and the responders you know can still manage to communicate with each other over these uh, uh, platforms tracking of victims is a very important uh, application uh, which uses both the uh, social media as well as the mobile uh, 
technologies uh, and this is something uh, which was used in a limited manner during the Uttarakhand uh, uh, disasters also and uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, doing a little research in this uh, how can we take this forward how can we use the um, uh, call data of the uh, of the individuals to track uh, their location before and after disasters just like the way uh, the dot is already used for tracking migration patterns uh, this call information can all, also be used for tracking down victims after uh, disaster during the uh, recovery phase, uh, uh, these technologies can be used for information gathering, uh, for uh, public feedback, for decision making, for monitoring of applications, claims, uh, you know, monitoring deadlines for various uh, uh, recovery projects. And uh, they are a great enabler in fostering transparency and accountability um, uh, in, the, in the process of uh, recovery recovery so uh, uh, these are the various uh, very quickly i've tried to cover that in various phases of disaster management how can these technologies be used uh, i will take another two three minutes and uh, try and uh, give you a sense as to where specifically uh, social media technologies and the mobile technologies can be used the first is the helplines that we create during disaster any disaster they tend to get overwhelmed and you there's always a shortage of manpower so here is the technology can come and use and you can use the uh, artificial intelligence powered chatbots to interact with victims and other citizens who are in need of information so this is one area in which uh, social uh, social media and such you know uh, combined with ai can really come in handy to help people um, during disasters there is an initiative by UN OCHA, which is called the Artificial Intelligence for Digital uh, Response, AIDR it is uh, called. Uh, it's an open source uh, software platform which uh, filters and classifies social media messages related to emergencies, disasters, and other humanitarian uh, uh, crises. And uh, uh, using uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, it tags, you know, the social media uh, messages and creates some kind of a structured data, which is uh, reflected on dashboards and maps and used in uh, analytics. Uh, so uh, this has facilitated better vectoring of response and aid during disaster. You know what are the hotspots and where, you know, the relief and uh, help is required. Uh, it has been very useful. Very recently, in the month of August itself, Google has announced a very uh, a good project, which is called the Android Earthquake Alert System. Um, now, uh, to detect earthquakes, you need to deploy sensors, seism seismic sensors uh, on, the, on the ground. You need to have a network of these sensors. Now, this is expensive. Uh, this, is, uh, this involves uh, time. Uh, they have to be maintained and they have to be uh, uh, connectivity has to be given uh, what they have done is they have uh, 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 using the reach of the android platforms on our mobiles you know they are leveraging that that reach to help detect earthquakes now the android phones which have got built-in accelerometers can be part of the system and uh, they can act as mini uh, seismometers and uh, can you know it forms it will be one of the world's largest earthquake detection network. Um, then uh, another great initiative, what I talked of very briefly earlier, is Google's artificial intelligence-based flood detection and alerting uh, system. They have very recently collaborated with the, the Central Water Commission to collect data and um, model, um, uh, create certain models for um, prediction of uh, floods. This is an ongoing effort by the Google in the country. Uh, lastly, I would like to just cover three or four uh, applications of mobile communications in Canada. Uh, these have been covered to some extent by Mr. Jain from uh, uh, DOT. I'll just go a little further. I spoke to you about the um, one use, usage of locating victims using the call, call data. That is one application that, that is there. 
the second one, uh, like the COVID Savdhan, is the CAP um, common alerting protocol based uh, alert dissemination system where the mobiles are used, SMSs, as well as cell broadcast technology can be used to um, provide alerts and early warning to the public at uh, large. And lastly, uh, apps uh, are a very important mobile technology. And we have seen now uh, good apps like Mossum by IMD and the Damini app. Uh, these apps uh, are now uh, surfacing and they are coming of age and they are uh, very useful in uh, their app. With this, I'll uh, uh, end. Thank you very much for your time. Over to you, Mr. Thapa. Thank you, sir, for your presentation and uh, highlighting the pivotal role played by social media in disseminating the information about the disaster scenario by to the people seeking to like contact the family and friends in disaster zones and seeking information regarding food, shelter, and transportation. So you have rightly uh, emphasized the implementation of AI technology, machine learning, and big data uh, that has also enabled people with the uh, multi-dimensional use of social media with the help which has helped them to create a kind of spatial data infrastructure making the fundamental of policy protocols and way to exchange information and uh, on ongoing priority uh, such sharing of data will also help both uh, the responder and survivors to create a new uh, best case scenario thank you very much sir now, for our next presentation, we have with us Professor V.K. Sharma, Vice Chairman, Sikkim State Disaster Management Authority. Uh, I would request Professor V.K. Sharma to kindly share his notes with the participants. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thapa. And uh, thanks for uh, inviting me in this very important uh, webinar. Uh, I am really enjoying it since uh, beginning and uh, I am so happy that uh, uh, NIDM and NDMA has taken this important topic and they are discussing all 10 points you know which uh, Honorable Prime Minister has given in 2016 uh, in the Asian conference. Uh, this is a wonderful initiative and uh, I would like to say that uh, because uh, about 600 participants are attending this uh, webinar, so let me explain to them and most of them I am seeing the list, uh, they are students and they are teachers, some associate professors, professors, so I think uh, it will be good in case I explain that uh, Honorable Prime Minister in 2016 summarized three important things because I think you might be knowing that in 2015 there was Sindai framework and uh, it is from 2015 to 2030 and India is signatory. Honorable uh, Home Minister Sri Rajnath Singh uh, he signed that, you know, that time in 2015 in, in Sindai. And uh, then there is second thing which you might be knowing that uh, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, which are again for 15 years, 2015 to 2030. And India is again signatory to that also. 2015, the Paris Agreement, and you might be knowing that India signed it a little later, but uh, we are signatory to Paris Agreement in which climate change and we know the impact of climate change on natural disasters. So, Honorable Prime Minister combined all three and gave these 10 points. So, I think this is the summary. These 10 points is Bible for us, whoever is working in disaster risk reduction in India. I think we should know that how important all these points are for us. And this point, you know, point seven, I think uh, social media and I think it is very well described. Uh, I was hearing Brigadier 
Gangwar, and I think very nicely, you know, he presented that how uh, you know we are using it and what is the potential of social media. Let me give you a little more historical part of it, but that uh, we recognize anybody who is working in disaster management. We recognize the importance of information, and there was a, a decade, you know, 1990 till 99, the United Nations declared that IDNDR, International Decade for Natural Disaster Reduction, and uh, in IDNDR there was one slogan one year, that is information is the key. In fact, all 10 years, you know, they gave different slogans and they tried to create awareness about disaster, disaster management those days, you know, now it is called as risk reduction. So they tried to, you know, give emphasize all important part. And I want to say that information or information management, information dissemination, they gave the title information is the key. So I think that was initiated by the United Nation IDNDR in high powered committee, which was set, it, set up by our former Prime Minister Shri Atal Bihari Vajpayee in 1999. And in high powered committee also, uh, I mean, I was part of that. And I'm fortunate to tell you that we consider the importance of information and media. Now, social media is very important, but those days, 1999, we were saying the importance of media. We organize a All India Conference, you know, on importance of media for disaster management, which was inaugurated by none other than the, prime, uh, the President of India. President of India came, you know, to address that because the, uh, the, the, the title was so important that media the importance of media in disaster management. And we discuss all these points, which is given by Brigadier Gangwar, that in every aspect of disaster management, you know, it may be pre-disaster, it may be at the time of disaster, it may be in post-disaster thing. Even the, in the developmental stages, the media is important. Now, social media is important. Now I'm coming to uh, the point that today we have an, a structure. We have National Disaster Management Authority, which is doing a lot. And you see that they are involved in Brigadier Gangwar gave some initiatives, you know, because he's with the NDMA, he's advisor. SDMA, I think SSDMA, the State Disaster Management Authorities, they have very important role that how they should use uh, the social media because i think the importance is known importance we have seen in last few disasters uh, several examples are given for example chennai flood for example the kerala flood and in kerala flood i think even the tutor you know he, they tutor played very important role you know and helped government, non-governmental organizations, victims, and I think very, very, and after that, you know, Twitter wanted to have MOU with the NDMA because they came to us that with Sikkim, they wanted to sign MOU. So we said that in case you do it with NDMA, then automatically all these states will be attached. And we can understand the importance of Twitter that how quickly you know we can disseminate information and how quickly it can go to, to the community the only thing is that in case there is the wrong information that will also be disseminated that quickly again so that is the only fear and that's why we were looking towards ndma that what action they take and in case ndma accept that then we have no problem because they know much better than which platform which media is more suitable uh, particularly in disaster situation when there is uh, this kind of thing so anyway whatsapp the uh, and all these states you know i'm i'm 
aware of Bihar, I am aware of Uttarakhand, I am aware of Kerala, I am aware of Tamil Nadu, of Sikkim. I think each and every state now using WhatsApp, you know, there are in Sikkim, we have three WhatsApp groups. One is weather forecast, and we are giving it, you know, to not only to all officers, we are giving up to the panchayat level. And anybody, all NGOs, the academic institutions, anything which is coming from IMD, you happily disseminate it on this platform and on this uh, WhatsApp. And this group is there, which is very big. There is another group, which is Disaster Management Information Group of Sikkim. And any small thing, even landslide, even one house is affected, even one person is in, injured, that information will be disseminated to the community, to the whole district, and uh, immediately, and what action is taken, and everything is so transparent that people know that what is going on and what is. So the third, uh, we have the, the, the uh, third uh, WhatsApp group, which is uh, uh, again giving information, you know, about the about uh, academic exercises like training, like uh, you know, all the trained officers, you know, they have a one group, and uh, they are communicating in in uh, themselves because, as very rightly said by uh, General Atasnain, that community is also very knowledgeable. Even our officers are very knowledgeable. So we, we should get their uh, knowledge also. So they are talking to each other and they are informing us that what they are lacking and what kind of capacity is required. So I think that kind of thing we are doing in Sikkim. I'm coming to some, several examples, which is uh, uh, which are known to me and several examples given by uh, Mr. Jain, which is who is very knowledgeable, and uh, uh, he gave that how uh, you know this communication used you know in the COVID nineteen. Brigadier Gangwar very nicely uh, gave the initiatives of the NDMA. I would like to tell you that now social media is used. Bangladesh, which is having the maximum number of volunteers, you know, for cyclone because cyclone is their problem and they have a very big group i mean uh, i know that few years back it was about 83000 people were volunteers you know in the country 83000 now it may be more and one thing which i like there that each taluk you know they have a whatsapp group and in case anything happen they, they, the volunteers are informed and they immediately act. So based on that, uh, in Sikkim, we are going to do the same way. And we are trying to make, you know, the volunteer groups, you know, district wise. We have only four districts and in four districts, we have uh, 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 started, you know, uh, taking details of volunteers. We are trying to give even training program on 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 uh, uh, mobile uh, through mobile because they will not be able to come to Gangtok or to Delhi, and we will make modules or we will request NIDM you know to make module and train them in disaster preparedness in disaster uh, you know response and because th there is a very very good group which is coming forward not only civil defense, but other people also in Sikkim. And uh, so I think we want to utilize this as an opportunity and want to train them so that they can be utilized. Because if we depend only on NDRF, it will take time. We have seen in 2011, 2011, I think NDRF came much, I mean, three, four days later than the, uh, there was no SDRF. So now we are more prepared actually. We have SDRF, we have volunteers, we have civil defense groups. And before the NDRF, you know, join them, they can start working. Even one platoon of NDRF is based on in Sikkim because our experience was 
that in case they will come from west bengal or from some other place it will take lot of time in last i will say that i think today this is the time of because i was member of un uh, isdr astag astag means the asia science technology academia advisory group and in that 5 years experience i could learn many things i have so many experience from asia and i can say only one thing that we should use maximum you know technology in risk reduction particularly warning is the key in case we could disseminate warning in case we have correct warning forecasting for each and every natural hazard then definitely we can do a lot we can save life we can save you know uh, economic losses and i think social media can play a very important role very effective role this we have seen uh, in the past and we, uh, this i can say with for firm uh, this thing that in case we use it then definitely it is a very very effective tool for risk reduction so warning system is one response is another rehabilitation and i think i fully agree and endorse the statement of brigadier gangwar that in each and every aspect of disaster risk reduction each and every aspect of disaster management cycle i think social media can play a very important role thank you very much you know for inviting me and uh, uh, i have another you know assignment you know i have to go to some other meeting so i think nidm will not mind in case i leave after my presentation thank you very much over to you mr saba thank you very much sir and you from your busy schedule you gave us your time and sir for highlighting also the uh, pm 10 point agenda sendai framework sustainable development goal and climate change adaptation they how this all together have created a comprehensive framework to reduce the climate and risk vulnerability and increase the resilience towards disaster and so you have also have nicely highlighted how sikkim is uh, using the online social networking services and social media like uh, you know, whatsapp facebook twitter etc to solve many problems during natural disaster thank you very much sir and thank you for joining us sir now i will request sri ajit atham project officer uh, delhi disaster management authority to share his views and experience over to you sir hello hello raju am i audible yes sir you are audible sir okay thank you so much for giving me this opportunity on speaking on in this uh, national platform uh, so a very good afternoon to all the dignitaries and uh, i adit patham project officer delhi disaster management authority I welcome all the participants on behalf of delhi disaster management authority okay thank you for this uh, help so without taking much time let's start with the presentation so in the introduction session professor surya prakash told about the uh, 10 point agenda given by honorable uh, prime minister of india in the first uh, asian ministry conference of disaster risk reduction in the year 2016 so today here we are discussing on point number 7 that is the uh, uh, utilize the opportunities of social media and mobile technology so the question is why he emphasized to use the opportunity of social media and uh, uh, mobile uh, mobile technologies uh, what i found on the while i i, I was surfing on internet and i found uh, that uh, the reason is uh, are you operating 
your side or sir i am presenting your presentation sir okay uh, can you please move on to the next slide okay so as i told you that why he emphasizes to use uh, mobile appo uh, to opportunity uh, lies with uh, social media and mobile technologies may be the internet uh, internet usage uh, worldwide it has been drastically increased over the past years if we can see that uh, almost 51% of users are now shifted towards on on their mobile rather than on their desktop so and uh, further the mobile traffic in the in uh, past years uh, has been increased by 222% this might be the reason he emphasized to use uh, social media and mobile technologies in the any uh, of disaster can you please move to the next slide please so here are some genres of uh, social media as uh, most of them uh, we are aware of this like uh, and there are many social medias uh, music uh, question and answer sites blog platform micro media such as uh, twitter social networks like uh, facebook sms voice instant messaging uh, M msn and uh, skype In the in the category of video, we have YouTube, and uh, furthermore, so these are some genres of uh, social media. And uh, if we move to uh, the characteristics of social media, it is uh, emphasize the variety of content format, including text, video, uh, photographs, audio, PDF, and PowerPoint. many social media makes use of these options by allowing more than one content and alternative It allows interaction to cross one or more platform through uh, social sharing email and feeds facilitate enhanced speed and breadth of information dissemination that is we we get more speed uh, while we disseminate uh, any information through social media then next provides for uh, one to one one to many and many to many communication like if i am sharing one post with my friend this is uh, one to one communication and uh, that that my friend is sharing my post to another friends this one to many and those uh, another friends are sharing uh, that content to others that become many to many communication enables next is enable communication to take place in real time Yeah, this is the very uh, bright future of uh, uh, social media that uh, we can have a real time uh, scenario real time uh, uh, monitoring of any event and this is a in uh, this is device in different that is we can use social media on various uh, uh, platform like uh, computer tablets smartphones okay next please social media and uh, natural disaster so as we know that uh, it provides valuable information to those in a disaster area pre or post disaster suppose somewhere uh, some district if if a place is flood prone disaster uh, flood prone area then they can have pre and uh, they can have pre uh, they can have information before the flood that uh, what the uh, precautionary measures they have to use and post disaster what are the resources available nearby so next one is uh, we can have uh, drive awareness outside the affected areas or generating some volunteers we can have uh, we can broadcast a message together volunteer in the wake of any natural disaster then the concept uh, 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 sorry connect uh, displayed families and friend it can help to uh, you know to uh, connect family and friend during any disaster or after disaster 
provide information about uh, unclaimed property and in worst case scenario offers uh, information about aid centers and other resources available to those next okay now let's move to the uh, mobile uh, part so opportunities lies with the mo mobile uh, technologies uh, can be we can have a uh, public awareness especially to vulnerable groups uh, about disaster risk and uh, preparedness then we have uh, we can have dissemination of early warning of uh, impending dangers how people can obtain uh, info about information about location and av availability of preparedness uh, services community specific and uh, uh, country specific uh, uh, develop co community specific and country specific parameters such as if we talk about company uh, community specific then uh, we can have whether it's uh, tribal community urban community uh, rural community and if we talk about uh, country specific parameters then we have we can have a uh, dedicated disaster helpline number and i'm uh, well i'm i i i, I heard that uh, ndm is working on this uh, that is erss emergency response support uh, system 112 so next please and sorry the fifth point is uh, various disaster alert app. Uh, uh, Brigadier Ajay Gangwarji has told about uh, Mossam and uh, Damini app. Mossam app is uh, uh, by IND and it inform about weather forecast, uh, temperatures, and uh, other wind speed. And then uh, Damini app gives the uh, lightning alert. And uh, one another app I would like to add in this is Magdoot app, which is uh, created by MD and ICAR, that is Indian Council for Agriculture Research. This is very helpful for farmer. And uh, how can we forget about uh, uh, ROG Setuwe, which is the self-assessment app uh, for COVID-19. So uh, these are some the uh, use of uh, mobile technology which is uh, one of uh, very common is common alerting protocol and i would like to state that the key uh, delhi disaster management authority is also working on uh, cap that we have some uh, stored number uh, when the disaster took place so we disseminate this uh, message to the concerned uh, officials along with the along with the uh, uh, with the officials working in the field of disaster management Delhi disaster management authority so that uh, message content of uh, type of incident and uh, time of incident the nature of incident and the, if there are any casualty or injuries uh, occurred so and the most important the location of the incident these all details are uh, shared with the uh, concerned official along with the uh, CAP. Okay. The next is supplementary device of alert, such as the media package to include local, we can have also local media, uh, local television station to disseminate uh, the uh, relevant information. In design and delivery weather related risk messages. Uh, suppose if we, are, if we are working, if, if we are not working, uh, of work and weekend. So there should be a, a proper mechanism to deliver uh, the weather forecast related, uh, information. And we can also have a community religious organization uh, to disseminate weather related risk messages. So uh, these are uh, some of my points. I have been given 10 minutes. So I tried my best to convey my uh, this, uh, uh, my knowledge. And further, I would also like to add that uh, uh, the Delhi Disaster Management Authority uh, has uh, Delhi recently has taken. Sorry, we are aware that uh, recently Delhi NCR has seen more than 15 earthquakes in a short duration of time. So Delhi and Delhi also comes under the uh, seismic zone of four. So keeping in view to aware uh, mass uh, gathering uh, mass. 
DDMA has recently uh, worked on their uh, media action plan. Uh, DDMA has uh, uh, displayed various zones during earthquake in the NCT of Delhi uh, in the prime location, uh, so that public can be aware. So all from my side. Uh, thank you, Raju, for uh, this opportunity. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your presentation and uh, and talking about the evolution of uh, social media as a new medium for sharing the information and also highlighting the characteristic of uh, social media and role of social media in disaster management. Uh, now I would request uh, Professor Surya Prakash, Head GMR Division, uh, NIDM, uh, and in charge of three special centers in NIDM to share his views. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Raju. Uh, my PowerPoint is visible? Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Okay. Audible and visible, both, huh? Okay, yes, now, uh, because my previous speakers have covered quite a lot, so I will try to escape uh, those parts and will try to uh, focus on some different uh, issues that I wanted to highlight. Although these uh, opportunities for utilizing social media was also highlighted in our national policy on disaster management, as well as National Disaster Management Plan, which was revised in November 2019, and the PM agenda, which was given uh, the, uh, in the first post Sunday Asia Ministerial Conference. Uh, otherwise, it was the seventh Asia Ministerial Conference. And uh, uh, my friends, uh, previous speaker have already mentioned Facebook is the largest social media being used by most of us YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. WhatsApp, Telegram, Messenger, Google Alerts, and other things. Now, uh, what we are mostly talking is in terms of electronic media. Our focus has become more of electronic media than of other social media. So I'll try to highlight some of the issues related to other social media also, which is in the form of our folklore, drama, exhibition centers, museums, where our uh, society goes and learns from there. So we can even learn by different other mechanisms than just this. And mobile apps, no doubt, in most of the cases, we have developed at the national and the state levels. Just mentioning few of uh, the mobile apps, which was recently developed by government of India and widely publicized and downloaded by the citizens of the country. This has helped us a lot in monitoring surveillance of the COVID affected population and non COVID affected population. So all these uh, types of uh, apps have been developed for different purposes by the center and the state governments. So the number of such apps you can see during COVID-19 situation and also recently DGI and the shared some of these apps, uh, which has already been mentioned uh, by my previous speakers. Uh, which has been widely publicized both for iOS platform as well as for Android platforms. And these are the links. You can download these from Google Play Stores. And this is what you will find the information. What does it do and how you can work with it or use it? So Mossam has said, make do India weather map, satellite weather maps, Damini, Indardhavas, Indarvazar. So many of such weather related, even private uh, uh, ventures, they have also developed uh, mobile apps for sharing their information with the common man. And also uh, the disaster alert agencies and disaster management authorities also developed uh, in collaboration with the, the weather monitoring agencies or disaster monitoring agencies. So Tamil Nadu was one of the first states which developed a Tamil Nadu system for multi edged potential impact assessment alert, emergency response planning and tracking system. They called it as TN Smart, and where they used to share all the information to the public and also getting information back from the public to the authorities. So these are kind of situations and bulletins which were shared with the public. And they could also get the information through various other mechanisms besides the mobile app using even email and SMS systems. So print, electronic and social media, all types of media have been utilized for these purposes. And uh, they also utilize as uh, my former speaker, uh, Mr. Jan said, even if the uh, push messaging systems are there, even if mobile is uh, in an off mode, 
or a silent mode still that uh, uh, the emergency ring will uh, go uh, uh, and work so their type of push system has also been developed to that and even not only in weather systems but in geohazard systems also we have a, a now mobile app even for earthquake monitoring in case you feel a jerk uh, just now ajit said uh, we had faced more than 15 earthquakes in the recent time in delhi and what is actually the magnitude and place of occurrence and the time of occurrence subject information if you want you can download this uh, rise queue uh, that is uh, the risk related to earthquake uh, from National Center of Seismology, uh, which is the nodal agency for earthquake monitoring. Uh, so you can get the information correctly and credibly without get, uh, spreading any misinformation. That is why we want that social media should become more reliable and credible rather than a, a source of rumor and misinformation. Similarly, there are uh, state level agencies like this uh, ISR, uh, the uh, seismic research institute in gujarat they have also developed their applications working for the local level now the advantage is that that the state level organization they can develop these in their own vernacular languages as well so that the people can easily understand and communicate with themselves and uh, there are many other such apps globally also with europe with america which also uh, monitor the global level of uh, disaster events so even if you are outside country and you are interested to know what have happened or happening around you in terms of uh, any disaster events that can be monitored using such mobile apps and these are widely uh, available and can be downloaded uh, for different purposes so you can see even ap disaster management directory is available names and contact numbers of the resource persons experts and authorities are given information about disaster management tech and similarly in other uh, weather systems alert systems so when even individuals organizations uh, from private sectors have also developed it as the government sector and also the uh, state governments you can see flood alert by, by the uh, west bengal government so <clears throat> i could uh, cite several of such <coughs> i'm sorry mobile which are available even our ndma national disaster management authority has also provided and shared information to these mobile apps. You can download and learn from them related to different types of disasters. And also for the kids, not only for the elderly ones, even for the children, they can uh, learn uh, through various uh, uh, books, uh, which are uh, in terms of entertainment come education or play come education. So this uh, knowing about disasters, through these mobile apps surely will be helping us and also getting alerts 112 was mentioned by him uh, so mha has developed this app also through which uh, this uh, information will be available in terms of landslide tracker and radio communication is also a social media which gathers information from the public it is also again two ways sometimes that they can connect you to the public or the uh, concerned authorities as well as communicate with you the messages from the authorities. Similarly, uh, the uh, trade fairs and festivals, they have also uh, opportunities for us as social media to utilize. I remember an uh, international trade fair at Pargati Maidan when NDMA and NIDM as well as NDRF joined hands together. And we displayed all the posters made by uh, the children and uh, awarded by uh, our Honorable Prime Minister himself on one of the occasions and uh, then uh, the students themselves talking about them and about the disaster management initiatives at the school levels so this is policy and then ex calling experts and discussing i remember we had a, a program called Swal Aapke Jawab Hamare. so this is what we were talking about uh, different disasters and then uh, taking them to the public public can come and ask questions and quizzes so these are kind of social medias which also need to explore beside the electronic media. You can see a large uh, crowd gathered around. When we started uh, making quiz for the public that how far do they know? And then we can test and also then sensitize them and mobilize them to learn more. And also giving them tips about disaster safety, do's and don'ts, or a type of construction designs, planning, 
and maintenance all this is possible using uh, such platforms where public come together in large numbers and sharing to posters at public places this is very very important uh, giving them clues about the pending disasters and also uh, have uh, observing uh, days i remember 18th august 18, 2010 18 children between the age of 4 to uh, 10 years they got killed under a landslide now this is not a small incident a family lost all the three children they had and they died while uh, they were uh, they went to the school to learn so, uh, during a day time that was around 9:30 so th these are the things that we have to do as social media and also uh, like at all levels not only the elderly ones or the uh, per persons who are working even the children in the school need to learn about it and we have to use our media in terms of uh, education with entertainment and games so we developed certain games also we developed uh, ludo we developed snake and ladder schemes and others uh, such uh, games uh, where, through which we also try to teach disaster management along with them memorial parks i remember i was in uh, taiwan they had a memorial park uh, built in with the name of the people who actually got killed and the map of that area which was affected uh, reminding people of how vulnerable we are and what kind of hazard can we can be stuck upon and similarly uh, earthquake 921 uh, that is 21st september in uh, the taiwan area which killed up so many people actually a complete memorial uh, site was created and experience science experience centers now telling them by uh, verbally that okay if your earthquake uh, is there you will feel a jerk or you will see things moving but what about keeping them in an environment and giving them a jerk of an earthquake of magnitude 5 or 6 or 7 and making them feel themselves and see what is happening to their room to their belongings and to themselves and how do they feel like so we have to create the such kind of disaster experience science centers uh, for the public for the social media and also putting pre and post big pictures in the field in the affected areas so that when people revisit those areas actually they can see what was the situation before and what is the afterwards and can we repeat it again so learning from them through the social medias of posters and displays uh, is very very important and providing them exact information of the situations that were faced at that time then the names of the people with their photographs so uh, reminding their memories of the disaster events and also giving them an experience on a prevention and education center disaster prevention and education centers have to be there and they can be memorial museums and the big things displayed over people can easily watch see or models we can create and these are also type of social media we can think about besides the electronic media in terms of twitter or in terms of other things when the internet is not working you can always go and see these things and learn and on the field fault find uh, where are the faults located which can cause earthquakes and pictorial walls showing the disaster scenarios how uh, people were panicky and uh, getting buried and uh, keeping the memorial museums uh, and the items as such so that they can see how these items were affected you could see the all the stopped at one time at 2:30 when this uh, situation earthquake took place on 12th may 2008 and their situations and the equipment even the response items that they had used which were effective and how long they could sustain and recover or respond in those situations and what was the relief situations so these big pictures of our disaster events and their response relief rescue should be also part of our social media and how we try to recover psychosocial trauma was talked about so children have to be engaged into some educational activity or play activity and this is how they were engaged in some of the places and the activities people are learning from each other our yoga went international and uh, people have learned from us let's learn from others as well so uh, till now we don't have disaster museums disaster uh, memorial uh, centers or experience centers i have urged to start with something through this social media uh, and then gain it we built up a program self study program i saw that it got very popular and it got a 
award also in digital governance uh, that uh, this is how it, uh, that public maps social maps which are prepared by themselves have also to be seen to be displayed so that and appreciated and they should be improved so that we can become more resilient and bringing uh, the demo structures in the field and through folklore plays dramas exhibitions i would say are also part of our efforts towards social media which we have to see and our socio cultural activities let's join our dm activities into them mainstreaming is not uh, putting something separately as disaster management event but bringing it with other events and integrating it with the lives lifestyles and culture of the people and their traditions and through the popular heroes actors singers they can also play a role and if they bring our issues to the forefront in the society this media will be more effective than the people like me who are less known to the public uh, so i think we have to bring these ambassadors into the forefront of our and then putting those uh, efforts of the appreciations i have seen uh, their free, uh, work done in one of the villages which where they themselves by their own contribution did it has to be appreciated applauded and sitting with them and talking in their own language and in their own terms with their own uh, conditions will be more useful and sharing these kind of do's and don'ts which you normally see in all means and virtual platforms we are going more for physical systems even virtual systems can also work and they can also create their own environment with given responsibilities and as i said one to one and one to many and many to many but congestion is very important we have to look into those issues and create that who does good follows good practices enjoys entertains and other who don't and these websites from where reliable information credible information can be had should be widely publicized along with our social media handles and also resilient symbols of the society i saw in a crossroad you move it in any direction to quickly lane this is a symbol of social resilience against disaster in japan on a crossroad why can't we build such social resilience symbols technology when it comes in terms of a mobile technology we are very much conversant and we have resources of mobile technologies to establish our communications however we are less careful about the uh, uh, media and also the power and the transport so we have to look into those situation also uh, when the sandai uh, Confer uh, world conference took place i saw many of the uh, technology firms they came forward and showed how our um, uh, the battery in the cars can also be utilized to charge our uh, uh, the transformers and the powers uh, equipments and uh, field uh, uh, based uh, mobile atms all these uh, money everything is important so can we do something more not only thinking in terms of our messages and communication but also providing relief and resources in disaster situations which have become scarce and difficult and challenging at those times drones provide also another opportunity for us and they have been utilized during covid-19 situation for surveillance and monitoring and these systems i think uh, we have to depend on with these words i would say that we can meet the challenges of the nature uh, which uh, puts uh, threats to us in uh, difficult situations with these words uh, i would uh, stop here and uh, request uh, mr raju thapa to take up question and answer session uh, thank you sir sir we have uh, as, as sir our uh, sir we have with us sir our uh, sasi bhushan mukesh sir lucky we got yeah yeah you can have his presentation <laughs> Uh, thank you sir for your uh, for highlighting the uh, highlighting that with the mobile app more people have information with them uh, all the time the more they will be like self reliant allowing rescuer or responder to concentrate on their uh, on the uh, on those that is in greater need of help thank you sir now i would uh, like to call upon sri sasi bhushan mukesh additional director general national academy of broadcast and multimedia the apex in house training institute of prasar bharat over to you sir thank you mr sapa i am very thankful to mr general manoj kumar yes sir executive director of the 
for inviting me in this webinar on to utilize the opportunities of social media and mobile technologies in all perspective of disasters management. Good afternoon to all the distinguished dignitaries, experts, and participants in this webinar. <clears throat> it is my pleasure to address you all on what a disasters mean for All India Radio and Doordarshan, the India's public service broadcaster. Today, in addition to con conventional analog, digital, and DTH mode of All India Radio and Doordarshan transmissions, all the All India Radio stations and Doordarshan channels are available on in social media also. The smartphone has become both for radio and television for the today's generation. Previously, we needed different receivers to receive radio and television programs, but with the use of IT-enabled alternate broadcast platform like News on Air, app of Prasar Bharti, social media, Facebook and Twitter, etc., all India radio and Doordarshan programs can be received on handheld mobile sets also. Now we are not confined to a small geographical areas. Anybody anywhere in the world can hear and see all India radio stations and Doordarshan channels. It is a time of crisis for us, be it a natural disasters, man-made disasters or health crisis, because though it may affect a particular geographical area in the beginning, its repercussions can be worldwide, as we have seen in the case of the COVID-19 pandemic. Everybody in this world is vulnerable to disasters and we have to pay a very heavy price during such times. Disasters come in many forms and shapes and with a unpredictable intensities, be it natural or man-made. Every year, natural disasters kill around 90,000 people and affect close to 160 million people worldwide. They have an immediate impact on human lives. They often result in, a, in the destruction of physical, biological, and social environment thereby having a longer term impact on the health, well-being and survival of life on earth. Be it the Holocaust of Kedarnath or the devastation left by the cyclone in Orisha and West Bengal or the untold suffering left by the Lathur earthquake or even the sudden kill by lightning strikes, the miseries are immense. While it is not possible to prevent disasters altogether, Steps can be taken to mitigate the damage caused by them, and media has a crucial role to perform in disasters management. Advanced technologies and accurate weather prediction have helped avert major disasters in recent times. For example, during the strike of Cyclone Amphan in Orisha and West Bengal in the early part of the current year, we are not left at the mercy of such disasters. We can do a lot to mitigate it be through effective pre-disaster communication, during disasters communication or post-disasters communication. Help is there at the hand, but we have to lend it with the media business and organizations like NIDM and NDRF are there to do just that. We must ensure minimum loss to both life and property through maximum possible communication. Well-conceived disasters communication plan does play a major role in disasters reduction and disasters management. All India Radio and Doordarshan has been continuously educating people at large and particularly those in disasters prone areas to remain prepared in, at all times for such eventualities. Radio being the most portable and the most easily accessible media, it has become, it has been used very effectively in disasters reduction and management, be it in the pre-disasters period, during the disasters period, or post-disasters period, or even for rehabilitation of the affected public. In times of crisis and emergency, radio can be lifeline for people in shattered societies or caught in catastrophe or it. desperately seeking news. Radio brings life-saving information. Being the today's India's public service broadcaster, All India Radio and Doordarshan has continuously risen to the occasion when disasters like explosion, fires, chemicals leaks, landslides, air crashes, bus and train accidents, 
cyclones, tsunami, floods, and earthquakes have struck our motherland. During the flash floods that struck Bihar in 2008, All India Radio had also developed a software which transferred calls from the helpline telephone to a centralized database in a server. All arrangements were then made to collect information of a person's thought to have been washed away by the floods, but who were actually alive and only got separated from their near and dear ones. Local all India radio stations came in there and the information was broadcast over its network, resulting in a connecting those persons to their near and dear ones, who now were assured that their kith and kin were only separated from them, but alive. The source of the information has to be verified and quoted with utmost care. It has to be borne in mind that while to some section of the audience, disasters stories are of a general interest, these are life and death issues to the affected persons and also of utmost importance to relatives and friends of such people living elsewhere. Thus, timely dissemination of factual and accurate information is crucial. Being the India's public service broadcaster, All India Radio and Doordarshan remain ever committed to these ideals as enshrined in their motto of Bhaujan Hitai, Bhaujan Sukhai, and Satyam Sivam Shundaram. All India Radio has its own internal standard operating procedure in place which enables all All India Radio stations to swing into immediate action on their own in case of disasters happening in their area of jurisdictions. All India Radio stations, particularly those located in the disasters prone area, also carry out regular campaign for educating its listeners on do's and do nots in case of various disasters. In time of crisis, All India Radio and Doordarshan collaborate with the government authorities to ensure highly reliable service and with the availability of requisite backup equipment and supplies, as well as standard procedures and checklist. They possess a high degree of emergency preparedness to assure continuous in information flow to the public. All India Radio and Doordarshan, besides the other media in our country in the recent years, has helped sensitize people most effectively through poor warning and coverage of natural disasters. Today, advanced techno communications facilities are available for early warning. So are evacuation plans in pre-disasters, safety of life and property during disasters, and rehabilitations in the post-disasters activities. But the success of all efforts depends largely on the understandings the officials from government and NGOs involved in rescue operations have with the media. On the other hand, lack of communication and coordination among the government officials and media persons during disasters lead to broadcasting, telecasting, and publishing of unverified and speculative reports, which are detrimental. Prasar Bharti services are available in all the corner of the country. All India Radio reaches 99% and Doordarshan reaches 91% in terms of geographical area of our country. A strong national broadcaster is a symbol of national pride for the entire nation and has a, has a great strategic significance. All India Radio and Doordarshan have proved their worthness by their test in times of crisis. Prasar Bharti participates in many international activities such as training course, workshops, seminars, etc., to update its preparedness for disasters. An ongoing example is the Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union Disasters Risk Reduction Broadcast Media Initiative, a project awarded by ABU by UNESCO, which focuses on enhancing efficiency of early warning system. Prasar Bharti is the committed to undertaking all disasters management related information services free of cost. Institutional tie ups like those with NIDM are also in place to carry this forward. Recent natural and man-made disasters are a major cause for concern to the global communities, hence the National Academy of Broadcasting and Multimedia, the apex training institutions of Prasar Bharti, and its regional academy at Shillong, devoted 
devote as far as possible at least one session on disaster management in all their training courses. The media plays a vital role in the management of disasters by gathering and transmitting information about affected areas, thus alerting the government in power for rescue and relief. The media should be very responsible in disseminating information in crisis. Besides providing the correct information at the right time, it should also create an environment of solidarity and empathy to help in augmenting the collective responsibilities to tackle the challenges posed by any disasters. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thapa. Over to you. Thank you very much, sir, for highlighting the various aspects that Prasar Bharati under. Uh, now, due to time constraint, uh, we will uh, fasten up a little bit, sir. Now, we will take few questions. Uh, we have received a huge number of questions. Uh, just we will take few questions. And uh, the first question is uh, directed towards Sri SSJN. Uh, sir, uh, is there any scheme of providing telecommunication facilities? in high altitude areas of Uttarakhand where there is no means of communication is available and the area is disaster prone, like landslide disaster or avalanches or cloud, cloud burst. Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, if you look at the disaster prone areas, border areas, then already a special drive is, is being undertaken by different telecom companies. Particularly, I can cite example of BSNL. They are trying to reach inaccessible areas of Himachal Pradesh. And uh, similar effort is being made by all telecom companies. And naturally, Department of Telecommunication, which is uh, under Ministry of Communication, is not directly involved into providing the telecom network as such. But the uh, telecom companies which are working under the domain of uh, Ministry of Communication, they do provide the telecom network. But other than this, we have uh, we have uh, facilit facilitated BNL to provide uh, uh, this uh, uh, our uh, chat gateway at Gaziabad, which has come up in India. So now all the state governments can, uh, they are able to get the satellite access quickly because all the permissions are going to be given through BSNL and MHA. So th these uh, satellite uh, communications, wherever the terrain is uh, not uh, fr friendly and uh, the population is spare, in such type of uh, locations, they can always go, go for satellite phones. But naturally, satellite phones are having their own disadvantages. Uh, the, even even now, the call uh, call uh, uh, data uh, data transmission rates and call rates are are at are very costly, around 30, 40 rupees per minute. So uh, sometimes uh, they can rely on satellite phones. And other than that, the telecom companies they have have been providing. They are trying to provide the. Uh, telecom facilities at in far flung area areas also of the country also thank you sir yeah, my now the the next question is directed towards uh, brigadier ajay gangwar ji uh, sir uh, sir are you there yes i am there Okay, sir. The question is, uh, there is a population which do not have access to smartphones, especially those who are underprivileged, like uh, Riksa, uh, those who are driving Riksa. So how are we intending to cover these people and bring them under the, uh, under the social media? How can we cover and how can we encourage them to use social media? Yeah, uh, we are acute, uh, acutely aware of the fact that uh, a very large segment of population in India does not have access to smartphones. But uh, some of our initiatives like the CAP project and all is SMS based. So even the normal uh, vanilla uh, phones uh, have access to the SMS facility. So that is one way uh, to reach out to these people. Uh, there are other means than uh, a mobile phone uh, um, itself, which can be used to engage with this uh, segment of people. 
as was brought out that in the common alerting protocol, uh, you have various dissemination uh, media. So phones, mobile phones is one of them. You can use a host of other uh, dissemination media like the television, the radio. Uh, most of the people that we are talking of have access to some form of the other of radio. That's the main uh, form of entertainment for such people. So radio can be used in a in, in a big way. Uh, in this, uh, there is also an initiative of the community radio, um, uh, which is very useful in engaging with the communities which have low bandwidth as well as resources. You can use other technologies like um, sign boards which are there or sirens which are there to reach out to these people. Uh, so um, we have to find alternatives for people who don't have access to technologies. Um, I hope I've answered that question. Thank you very much. And the last question is directed towards Professor Surya Prakash. The question is from Onkar Puri, Advisor Disaster Management. The question is how mobile app application can be used for uh, risk reduction platform as ex ante technique with the ex post activities like DRNA and impact assessment. Uh, Raju, actually these are two parts uh, that uh, pre and post uh, disaster situations. Disaster situation, we are sharing the knowledge related to its uh, risk assessment prevention and mitigation so all this knowledge can be implied by the society through these web apps or mobile apps which may have even web apps also the second part is post disaster situations mostly the information is disseminated uh, through uh, various media even sometimes through satellite imageries and that information based on that uh, some kind of preliminary assessments can be done so mobile apps, so you can uh, take the photographs, as I said, in crowdsourcing techniques, and it can be sent to the concerned authorities. So that type of uh, uh, crude damage assessment is possible. Our DRNA, we have a proper mechanism for assessment. That needs to be followed uh, as per uh, agencies. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. With that, we have come to the end of our technical session of today's uh, webinar. And now moving on to our validation session, I would uh, once again like to call upon our ED and IDM Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, VSM, for his concluding remarks. Uh, sir. Uh, Thank you, Raju. Uh, it was a very entertaining session for last two hours, uh, more than two hours, uh, because the uh, panelists were highly informed and uh, very experienced and they uh, the points issues that they gave out today was based on their personal experiences and hence very very practical uh, finally i would like to say uh, to add on to whatever they have said is we require a single dashboard for the social media today uh, if you see just for weather there are so many apps mausam damini uh, they are coming out and we are trying to propagate uh, similarly, Abda Mitra is coming out, Abda app from uh, NDMA. So everyone is coming out with an app of their, uh, with respective ministries. But it is not possible for a user, uh, even though they're very uh, to look at so many apps to find out where does he fit in. So there is a requirement to, for this, there should be a holistic view and one app which meets all the requirements uh, should be uh, there. So if someone is the same app, if someone is interested in cyclone because that his area is affected by cyclone, he should uh, show his preference to cyclone in that. Some who are uh, who have more landslides in their area, he should select uh, as his preference as landslide and in a degrading uh, uh, order of uh, whatever number of uh, uh, hazards that are present in his area. So it should be a multi-hazard uh, app which combines the inputs from all other social uh, apps of each uh, ministry or each organization which is coming out with such apps. So I think some such initiative if taken by the NDMA is uh, developed, then it will, uh, the chances of it reaching the masses will be quite high. Because today, if you ask anyone, have you downloaded Damini app? 99% uh, of the people won't even know about it. 
uh, or any other app. So even in the uh, social media and the television, we are not propagating them. And even if we propagate them, you will find uh, uh, people are not, how many apps will you download? Five, seven, 10, 20? So there has to be some sort of semblance. So that is my, uh, from what I understood that we are doing a lot. Uh, every organization, every department is doing a lot in reaching out to the last mile connectivity. And uh, the success rate is very high and we are able to reach out. And this COVID-19 pandemic has actually opened uh, new avenues, new, I uh, have opened uh, everyone uh, so that the acceptability or acceptability of such uh, information through the mobile uh, has become a reality and people are ready to accept that. So to make it easier for them, we have to find ways and means to propagate such things. Uh, the IEC campaign has to be in a much, much bigger way. And uh, slowly, slowly, it should become one-stop solution for everything. And that is what we should aim at. And it has to be done by a government agency. It cannot be done by a, uh, a private organization uh, so that it is open to everyone, easily downloadable, it should have a very uh, uh, low bandwidth requirement and it should uh, it should be accessible it should not draw too much of power also from the mobiles that once we it should not be a heavy program it should be a very very light program so that the battery life is also uh, saved in the bargain when he's working on this app because whenever a disaster strike the first thing uh, that goes away is electricity and uh, uh, like in Bihar, we are aware when the floods came, large number of people were asking for uh, power packs so that they can charge their mobile. Even though the mobile network was on, but people didn't have power to charge their mobiles and hence they were not connected. So such things, solar chargers, such things should also be uh, incorporated in such uh, social media technology as to how we can help them to continue using such apps or which mobiles or like, uh, any other uh, television uh, during a disaster. Uh, so with this, I thank all the panelists for uh, giving out such valuable inputs and insights uh, from both the ministry level, from the uh, broadcasting uh, management, from NDA, uh, specifically we have three speakers uh, from communications and the two states uh, who have covered in this, uh, giving out the perspective of a district level and a UT level and state level. Thank you so much. Uh, and the report, uh, uh, I think, will cover most of the points given by each speaker in detail so that it can be used for further uh, actions. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Raju Dhapa. Thank you very much, sir, for your concluding remarks. Now I will uh, request Mr. Mr. Anil Kathet, who is currently working as a young professional in uh, GMR division for his report uh, of what you Thanks, Raju. Good afternoon to all the delegates, experts. In today's university world and mobile technology, we define the means of communication. These platforms are efficient and easy way to impart awareness, preparedness, to connect, discuss, share knowledge in specific way. Currently, in COVID-19 pandemic, these were used for disseminating the precautionary measures to storms as well as government's initiating guidelines to combat it. Then we talk about the response and rescue operation. This time is crucial element, and social media, mobile technology can fast track these operations and can be helpful in cutting down the time. Example and automated SOS service was introduced by the army during 2014 Kashmir floods for rescue operations. Similarly, during Uttarakhand tragedy of 2013, these technologies were used by standard people in locating safe, safe spot. But we have to also admit that these platforms are to as sort. Apart from several benefits, these platforms are sometimes misused which intensifies the crisis situation. Like misinformation on chicken as a carrier of coronavirus was widely disseminated, and consequently, the lottery industry suffered huge revenue losses. Therefore, this platform should be managed strategically to push the means of communication before, during, and post-disaster. Hopefully, the inputs uh, from distinguished dignitaries, renowned experts in today's webinar, 
will be helpful in developing the roadmap to strategically utilize the opportunity of social media and mobile technology in TRR. At the outset, I would like to propose hearty vote of thanks to dignitaries of inaugural session three, G. V. Sharma, Member Secretary, NDMA, Lieutenant General Shayat Atta Hasnan, Member NDMA, Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, Executive Director, and IDM for their supervision, setting the context of the webinar through their respective experiences and knowledge. I also take this opportunity to thank our distinguished experts, Professor D.K. Sharma, E.C. Sikkim SDMA, Sri S.S. Jain, Director, EM Department, Department of Telecommunication, Brigadier Ajay Gangwar, Advisor, NDMA, Sri S. Mukesh, ADE and APM, Professor Sujay Prakash, Head GMR Division, and IDM, and Ajit Atham Project Officer, DDMA, for making the web webinar significant through their wisdom and experiences. I express a deep sense of gratitude to all the participants for their active participation in the webinar. I would also like to thank my GMR colleague, Mr. Raju Papa, for moderating and Dr. Ajit Kaur for facilitating the webinar. In words, I conclude my word of Thank you. Over to you, Raju. Thank you, sir. With that, uh, we have uh, come to the end of this webinar. And uh, there are a few announcements for the participant. Uh, NIDM is also organizing several other webinars and training programs in various aspects of disaster management. And we would request you to kindly visit our official website, www.nidm.gov.in, to get the details of all our, all our upcoming programs and activities. Uh, you can also visit our official YouTube channel also to get access of our conducted programs. Yeah, and uh, your attendance is automatically recorded in the uh, in the Cisco WebEx platform, so you don't need to uh, worry about your attendance. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for participating.